Yeah. C and Shay. Fight. Let's go. Woo! I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting just to make it through. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting just to make it through. I've been down for so long. I forgot how it feels to be up. And I've been fighting so hard. Just like fire, yeah. In my bones. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, fire. In my bones. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. understand that God never sends anybody unqualified. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how articulate you are. I don't care how many degrees you are. There's two requirements that must be in place if you're going to do it. According to Leviticus 11 and 44, he says, I am the Lord your God, and you shall therefore sanctify yourself and be holy, for I am holy, and touch not the unclean things, and then I will receive you. And then not only must you be saved by the power of God through sanctification and being converted. That means I choose to be saved. How many of y'all folks are going out telling folks that honey ain't nothing in the world? Quit telling that lie. There's a whole lot of stuff in the world. There's a whole lot of stuff that make you feel good. Turn your head and spin your head. Have you running and trumping. I saw one guy, he got hooked up with the wrong folks and the very thing he kept back to, he told somebody, he said, man, I ain't gonna never leave the church. He said, oh my God. I, I, he said, I ain't gonna never leave the church. Church, and the next thing I found out, he was down in the gambling house. He was only in the gambling house because his confession was only in his mouth and it was not in his heart and not in his works. Well, let me, let me get back to my text. So it was here that your potential, meaning that I've got to qualify myself. Do you all not know? Help me preach this thing, Holy Ghost. God cannot lie concerning his word. Oh, God cannot lie. The Bible said his word is not short concerning his promises. Meaning that if God declares that you are to be blessed, you are to be blessed. If God declares that you're going to be healed, you're going to be healed. He said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes were healed. So you can do it. It seems to me, my brothers and sisters, the reason why we cannot see full manifestation is because we don't have full surrender and we don't have full obedience. We don't have manifestation because, first of all, there are a few principles you must understand about what happens in the church. The first thing that you do when you come into church, there is an invite. How many of you all know that the invite means that you're happy, you're greeting, you're sharing? Nobody wants Jesus until you learn how to do an invite. Some of you are wondering why your children are not saved and wondering why they don't want to come around the church. Because you're always browbeating them and beating them up and telling them what they're not. And Honey, you tell them that, baby, you just got done smoking dope last night. You just got done leaving the hotel but you still mine and I still love you I don't care who they go with and who they be with you have to understand that their deeds of sin should not separate them from you because if Jesus went to the cross and died for your sins you ought to be able to tolerate theirs don't never let anybody identify your child by what he do and where he at 
and how many mistakes he's made. He said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, the Bible teaches us that many of us, we cannot draw people because our people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is accumulated facts, but wisdom is a proper distribution. Honey, let me tell y'all something. The minute you know how to go in your kitchen and make you some German chocolate cake, don't tell me it's German chocolate cake and you ain't got no chocolate. Some of us ain't got no chocolate, and we tell them folks it's German. Folks ain't crazy, and they can taste what chocolate tastes like. They know what the church ought to be doing. They know how the church ought to be living. There's a standard of the church that the world knows about. Because he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. And the love of the Father is not in him. The three things that are in the world is the lust of the, lust, the, the, lust of the flesh, the pride of life and the lust of the eye. These are the things that confuses the plan of God in your life. How many of y'all know y'all got to come out of that world? You, you want full manifestation, but you haven't had full surrender yet. And you're trying to figure out how come things ain't happening. Look in the mirror. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither he's a man that he should repent. Because if God says you're blessed, you're going to be blessed. And when you sanctify yourself, you set yourself apart for the purpose of God only. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Honey, how are you going to think your body, you're going to be healed? Your body, listen to me, your body is not a trash can. You can't dump everything on you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And when you defile your temple, the presence of the Lord will leave. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to work, conform means to comply with the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are you going to get renewed in your mind and you don't come to Bible study? How are you going to learn if you only want to come to musicals? Jesus had 30 years. Paul had 18 years. It takes training and it takes discipline. It takes the moment in time when you tell your neighbors and your friends, if you can go to every baseball game, basketball game, and I have no problem with that because I had two boys who played professionally, but I promise you one thing, I never allowed any of that to take the place of God. Oh, I got to stop here. So we got to get in the right place and get in the right position. And when you begin to submit yourself to God, God will begin to show you his hand and his power. And the first thing that we experience in church is an invite. Nobody wants to be saved if you look like you just got finished eating, drinking prune juice. And the reason why many of us cannot rejoice in bad times is because we don't keep our praise in bad times. Your praise ought to be better in bad times than it is in good times. Anybody can praise him when we ain't got no headache. Anybody can praise him when they ain't got no pookie. Anybody can praise them when they
truth that we are indeed chosen to be Christ's representatives, Paul then challenges us to live worthy of the name of a Christian. All right, all right. Saints, there is a life we have to live to be worthy of the name Christian. And we use it so lightly, you know, yes, I'm a Christian. Uh Yeah, I've been been saved for so many years. But in verse 4 and 2, Paul admonishes us how to walk. He says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. He's teaching us how to walk in Christ. He's teaching us how to be an example of a Christian. And I know that sometimes when we say we are Christians, I can just see God just, Lord, have mercy to Jesus. You know, our parents used to tell us to watch how we act when we go out. Because your action calls shame to the family. Amen. And we as saints of God don't need to be calling, causing shame to the body of Christ. Right we are saying we save, we say we are Christian, but then our deeds and our actions are otherwise. Come on. Come Amen. On. Christ, Paul admonishes us how to walk. He said with all lowliness and meekness. When the last time you saw that? Yep. With all lowliness and meekness. Yeah. That means being Humble, being gentle. Two, he said, with long suffering. He wants us to be patient. See, somebody was patient for you, but we have no patience for nobody else. Amen. With long suffering, patience. Then he said, forbearing one another in love. What is forbearing? That means to understand. Understand my troubles. Understand what I'm going through. Understand who I am. Just don't throw me off, but understand my fight, my battle, my struggles. We need to forbear with each other. It's so funny how we want everybody to forbear with me. But you can never forbear with no one else. You can never have long suffering from nobody else. You want me to be perfect. But it's okay for you to be imperfect. Amen. That's a lie. Paul said that we must be forbearing one another in love. Amen. Understanding one another in love. You need to understand who I am. I need to understand who you are. I don't know what you left out of your house. I remember when I was having an attack on my heart. And I just w- didn't know what it was. And I kept saying, Lord, I haven't been in this place before. I've not felt this type of pain before. I've never been here before. Amen. And I was waiting on something to happen that didn't happen. And I reacted in an irrational way. Yeah. Tell your neighbors, yes, yeah, sometimes we can be irrational. But you need to be able to look at that irrationality and say something must be wrong. So many times we'll look at each other and go judge. Something must be wrong because usually she ain't going to act that way. I act very irrational. Amen. I acted right out of holiness. Well, I will say, but my, my feelings got the best of me.
Social media wasn't in here, I would say this word, but if I did, y'all would say it, I cussed in church. <laughs> but <laughs> uh -huh, it would be, well, maybe you need to hear because maybe somebody will understand this. It just means to do your damnedest, <laughs> uh -huh, to keep the unity, that's in the dictionary, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Romans 12 and 18 said, if it be possible, oh, that, you know, if it be possible, that lets me to know that it might not be possible at times. Uh -huh. At times, it might not be possible, but it said, if it be possible, as much as lieth in who? You live peaceable with all men. Who glory now? Nah, 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 if it be possible. Now, nah, you know, some folk make it kind of hard for you to be at peace with. Uh, amen. In the church. Man, you done prayed, you done fasted, you done fellowship, but yet it's hard sometimes to be at peace with everybody in the church. Oh, y'all ought to go ahead on and get delivered because you know sometimes folk just get on your nerves. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? But the theological background for unity, there is one body. And one spirit, just as you are called to be one hope we, when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is over all and through all and in you all. So if all of us have the spirit of God, there should be some peace, some unity, some love. Some compassion in the body. See, the church's unity depends on the saints. <laughs> Living out the reality of who they are in Christ. We put off the old. The feudal ways of thinking and put on righteousness. Holiness and love. The Bible gives us a command to follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness. Oh, 
glory. Hallelujah. Springing up, trouble you and thereby may be defiled. Get rid of the bitterness. Uh, you know, it ain't no hurt like church hurt. Ooh, glory. Hallelujah. It ain't no wound like a church wound. It, 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 it seems like you, the devil don't want you to get over and forgive those who offended you. Every time you come and get in their presence, amen, something rise up on the inside. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. I got a house here tonight. <laughs> rise up and give you something to make you want to pick them out of your heart and just start slapping them around a little bit till you feel a little bit better. Oh, I know I'm on your pew. You ought to just say ouch. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? But you're in the body of Christ and you ought to forget all that stuff. You got to let some things go. You can't have bitterness in your heart and say you love your brother or sister. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Bitterness will take you straight to hell. You can't die hating folk and a man and, and, and won't forgive nobody that wronged you. You got to let forgiveness be a part of you just like your everyday clothes. When you get up, you ought to put on forgiveness. Uh, so. Bitterness. Y'all sit down, I ain't finished yet. Bitterness. Will cause you to have all kinds of attitudes. Just because you was mistreated one time don't mean everybody's trying to mistreat you. Just because you was hurt one time don't mean everybody's out to hurt you. And they got that saying out there, hurt people hurt people. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. You, you, you need to let that go. Look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Let it go. Don't, 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 let it go. Come on, come on. Tell them again. Say, let it go. 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 I assassinate that spirit of bitterness. In the name of Jesus, I cast it out of this place and out of your heart and out of your mind, out of your emotions. Be gone now. In the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah. I feel somebody got to live and touch your heart right now. Say, it was me. Yo, Shahan Narahosi. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>